What's up you guys, it's Adana. welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So this is day two of my first week as a trauma PA. As promised, I told you guys that I was gonna be doing a week long story time bringing you guys along the way um, on this journey with me through my first week as a trauma PA in a level two trauma hospital. So that is what this is gonna be. This is day two. If you haven't seen day one, go back and look at that. Um, and of course, day three will be coming for you tomorrow. So day two starts off like day one. You know, I got to the hospital, still eerie, walking down an empty hallway, seeing like no patients, no families visiting. Um, I don't like I don't have to buy my own scrubs because we use a scrub machine so I just went down to the scrub machine got my scrubs went upstairs to the call room and changed my clothes um, after I did that I went to what was called sign out which is where the PAs from the overnight shift from the previous 24 hours gives the new PAs that are coming on for their 24 hour shift report on the patients that are currently under our service um, and if there were any like overnight incidents or um, anything that's pertinent that needs to be told uh, and care that needs to be given. So I was at sign out there was another new hire PA with me as well. And so we were there listening to the sign out. Once we got sign out from the other PAs, they finished off whatever they needed to do if they had like last minute notes or anything like that. And then we all went down, um, no, and then we all went up to the other sign out like with the trauma surgeons and we're just giving them report and they're talking to us also on like, you know, any overnight incidents that they may have had. And at that sign out, you're also with the general surgery PAs, which is also what I am. So um, currently the residents were there, so they were giving report on those particular patients that they had seen under the general surgery service, I guess you could say. So once we do that, you go and you get breakfast. So <laughs> free breakfast, always a perk. So always happy times with that. So we went downstairs to get breakfast. Um, and then it was like a pretty low morning, honestly. Like, if, you know, not like yesterday where, you know, immediately at like 11 o'clock it hit and like there was just traumas coming through. It was like pretty low throughout the morning, um, even up until like midday. And then like literally, Literally, like once the noon hour hit, that's when things started going way left. And we got hit with like three traumas immediately, like all, almost all at the same time, like within a 15 to 40 minute time period where you're getting called for like level two trauma here, level two trauma there. Um, and then they'll be like uh, ETA 15 minutes. Um, and so then you're dealing with one trauma but then another trauma is being rolled into the room. And so it was just like, I don't know if you've seen my uh, trauma uh, surgery, I guess, or trauma PA um, rotation video, but that's essentially what I was doing. So I literally like, once the trauma comes in, we get like the bags of saline or LR, which is lactated ringer depending on like how um, bad of a situation the person is in. And so we'll get that, we'll um, have that ready for the ED text to put a line in. And we usually like two lines um, so that one we can you know draw blood from and one you can give medication in. Um, once they're being rolled in and we're doing that, we're also like either trying to take off their clothes so that we can salvage it or just cutting through it again, depending on how sick or injured the patient is. And that is like the, one of the most important things that I realized that you have to have as a trauma PA is uh, trauma shares because we can spend like a good, you know, 30 to 40 seconds just looking like who has scissors? Does anybody have trauma shares? And if that is the case, like that's like precious time that you could be, you know, taking off this patient's clothes and visualizing and seeing exactly what is going on with them. And so we're running through like ABC, um, your ABC is so airway, breathing and circulation. So you want to make sure that the airway is pet, uh, like patent, like they're able to talk. There's nothing obstructing it. Um, that their breathing is not labored um, and then that they have good circulation so we're like checking pulses and things like that so when that the traumas were rolling through like that's really what my role was because again like day two you guys right so this is day two like i'm literally like just 
baby PA here coming in. So um, just kind of like trying to not step on anyone's toes or be in the way, but at, at the same time, be relevant and be um, available for help if needed. Um, so I did that and, you know, yesterday I got to do like my first note and today, um, uh, I was able to actually, you know, suture as a full fledged PA for the first time. Um, so I did a lot of suturing when I was a student, but not any as a PA, cause again, this is day two. So I was able to do that. Um, I did, it was just simple interrupted, uh, sutures with, um, I think it was 3.0 proline. And so I, because the patient had a scalp laceration. So I put that in um, and it was, it was cool, you know, like just kind of going back and remembering like, oh, like sterile technique and like how to open up the little suture packet to make sure that you're not contaminating your field. And, you know, just doing all of those, those things that you're taught early on in your in clinical year of PA school and throughout your clinical year PA school um, and you do get to practice it but now doing it again like as a PA and so doing that I also got to write the note on that on my lack repair which was cool again seeing my name on the screen um, but uh, you know I'm just getting a little bit more comfortable in like putting in orders understanding what the like the usual orders that we're automatically going to order for each patient that comes in and that's always going to be like for the most part, like a chest x-ray um, or a pelvic x-ray. And then, um, and those that are like usually with like motor vehicle accidents or motorcycle accidents, like we'll check the chest and the pelvis just to make sure that there's no like breaks in of ribs or of the pelvis. Um, and then also that we are not seeing any like um, pneumos or hemos, which is like air in the lungs or blood in the lungs. So We'll do that and then we'll do um, like a CT scan of the patient's body just to kind of make sure like, hey, like there's no free fluid anywhere and things like that. And then also like what I've been um, reading up on and you would think like, oh, okay, you don't kind of have, you don't have to study anymore because you're a PA. You're wrong. You still have to study, especially as a new grad PA, um, because you really don't know it all at all. So um, I've been looking up the FAST exam because really and truly we should be doing a fast on every trauma patient that comes in and we've been doing you know fast exams on those patients and so it's just good to know exactly like where um, to put the probe because this is through the use of an ultrasound and you'll put the probe in like various different places like sub xiphoid and then you know towards the right upper quadrant, then left upper quadrant, and then the super pubic area. And what you're doing is you're looking for free fluid in the the heart, like the, you know, the pari, well, like, yeah. And so like in the, the spaces of the heart cavity and then your pleural cavity, so like the lungs, and then free fluid in the abdomen. And that can be anything, you know, um, but it's typically like blood in these like traumatic situations. So that's usually what we're doing. Um, and so I did a lot of that. Again, still a lot of like pushing, pulling, um, you know, cutting and uh, doing those type of things. Um, not as sore today as it was yesterday, but um, still sore. But getting used to this whole like, you know, all of the movements and running up and down the stairs and doing these various different things that um, I wasn't so much used to before. So my day is getting better. And so I'm, my, my week is getting better, I guess you can say. And so I'm excited about that. Um, I wrote a couple more notes today. So I'm getting a little bit more familiar with the computer system, which is good. And um, just kind of getting familiar with like the faces, like seeing the same faces, like your radiology techs or your x-ray techs and um, you know those individuals that are coming in and we're coming in contact with each day. Um, one thing again that has changed dramatically is obviously like when I was a student, um, cause I did my rotation there like almost two years ago. It will be two years, uh, in the summertime. But when I was a student there, obviously we weren't like swabbing everyone for coronavirus. We weren't putting masks on them, but, uh, every trauma that comes into the hospital, we're putting a mask on them. They get a mask and then we're swabbing them for, uh, the coronavirus because the location that I'm in is really like a hotspot for our state. And so like we have um, in, the, in that particular county, it has like the largest number 
of cases of the coronavirus. So it's just an extra added step, an extra precaution that we're taking to ensure that not only are the patients that we're seeing safe, but you know everyone else in the hospital as well. So um, because once you find out a if you're positive or negative, um, depending on what it is, if you're positive, then you know there are precautions that we need to take in terms of isolation and all that stuff. So it's it's interesting. It's a really different climate and um, I'm. it's going to be interesting to see like how things continue to change as we go on day by day. But right now it's still pretty surreal. Um, but I am excited that I get to learn a lot. Um, I get to do a lot and experience a lot. Um, I know that these are like baby steps again, like, you know, it's day two. So, um, although I'm expecting to learn certain things, I realize like, Hey, you still have to take time to, you know, get into it. This is literally only your second day on the job. So just bear with me, you know, as I continue to tell you guys about this, I'm sure I'll have an interesting thing that happened, um, tomorrow because there's never a dull moment, um, on this particular service line. So, uh, very interesting people that I meet, uh, in terms of patient population and, um, just kind of some really interesting, like various different, um, disease processes and then also injuries that I'm seeing. So, can't wait to tell you what I see tomorrow. Um, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell. Um, also follow me on Instagram, you guys. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is day two of Trauma Surgery PA done. <laughs> um, and day three will be coming to you guys tomorrow. All right, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.